Physics Textbook of Class 11th Part 2 Chapter 13 Kinetic Theory Narrated by Isna Rafat Khan Introduction Boyle discovered the law named after him in 1661. Boyle, Newton and several others tried to explain the behavior of gases by considering that gases are made up of tiny atomic particles. The actual atomic theory got established more than 150 years later. The kinetic theory explains the behavior of gases based on the idea that gas consists of rapidly moving atoms or molecules. This is possible that the inner atomic forces, which are short-range forces that are important for solids and liquids, can be neglected for gases. The kinetic theory was developed in 19th century by Maxwell, Boltzmann and others. It has been remarkably successful. It gives a molecular interpretation of pressure, temperature of a gas and it is consistent with the gas laws and the Avogadro's hypothesis. It correctly explains specific heat capacities of many gases. It also relates measurable properties of gases such as viscosity, conduction and diffusion with molecular parameters yielding estimates of the molecular size and masses. This chapter gives an introduction to the kinetic theory. Molecular Nature of Matter Richard Feynman one of the greatest physicists of 20th century considers the discovery that matter is made up of atoms to be a very significant one. Humanity may suffer annihilations due to nuclear catastrophe or extinction due to environmental disasters if we do not act wisely. If that happens and all of scientific knowledge were to be destroyed, then Feynman would like the atomic hypothesis to be communicated to the next generation or creatures in the universe atomic hypothesis all things are made up of atoms little particles that move around in a perpetual motion attracting each other when they are at a very little distance apart but repelling upon being squeezed into one another speculations that matter may not be continuous existed in many places and cultures. Canada in India and Democritus in Greece had suggested that matter may consist of indivisible constituents. The scientific atomic theory is usually credited to John Dalton. He proposed the atomic theory to explain the laws of definite and multiple portions obeyed by the element when they combine into compounds. The first law says that when two elements form more than one compound for a fixed mass of one element, the masses of other elements are in ratio of small integers. To explain the laws, Dalton suggested about 200 years ago that the smallest constituents of an element are atoms. Atoms of one element are identical but differ from those of the other elements. A small number of atoms of each element combine to form a molecule of the compound. Gay-Lussac's law, also given in early 19th century, states when gases combine chemically to yield another gas, their volume are in the ratio of small integers. Avogadro's law or hypothesis says equal volume of all gases at equal temperature and pressure have the same number of molecules. Avogadro law combined with Dalton's theory explained the gay lussacs law. Since the elements are often in the form of molecules, Dalton's atomic theory can also be referred to as the molecular theory of matter. The theory is now well accepted by the scientists. However, even at the end of the 19th century, there were famous scientists who did not believe in the atomic theory. For many observations in recent times, we now know that the molecules made up of more atoms constitute matter. Electron microscopes and scanning tunneling microscope enable us to even see them. The size of an atom is about an angstrom, that is 10 to the power minus 10 meters. In solids which are tightly packed, atoms are spaced about a few angstrom, that is 2 angstrom apart. In liquids, the separation between the atoms is also about the same. 
in liquids the atoms are not as rigidly fixed as in solids and can move around this enables a liquid to flow in gases the interatomic distances are in tens of angstroms the average distance of a molecule can travel without colliding is called the mean free path the mean free path in gases is of the order of thousands of angstrom the atoms are much free in gases and can travel along the distance without colliding if they are not enclosed gases disperse away in solids and liquids the closeness make the interatomic force important the force has a long range attraction and a short range repulsion the atoms attract when they are at a few angstroms but repel when they come closer a static appearance of a gas is misleading the gas is full of activity and equilibrium is a dynamic one in dynamic equilibrium molecules collide and change their speeds during the collision only the average properties are constant atomic theory is not the end of our quest but the beginning we now know the atoms are not indivisible or elementary they consist of nucleus and electrons the nucleus itself is made up of protons and neutrons the protons and the neutrons are again made up of quarks even quarks may not be the end of the story there may be string like elementary entities nature always has surprises for us but the search of truth is always enjoyable and the discoveries are beautiful in this chapter we shall limit ourselves to the understanding of the behavior of gases and a little bit of solids as a collection of moving molecules in incessant motion behavior of gases properties of gas are easier to understand than that of solids and liquids this is mainly because in a gas molecule are far from each other and their mutual interactions are negligible except when two molecules collide gases at low pressure and high temperatures much above that at which they liquefy or solidify approximately satisfy a simple relation between the pressure temperature and volume given by pv is equals to kt for a given sample of gas here t is the temperature in kelvin or absolute scale k is a constant for a given sample but varies with the volume of the gas if we now bring in the idea of atoms or molecules then k is proportional to the number of molecules say n in the sample we can write k is equals to nk observations tell us that this k is same as for all the gases it is called the boltzmann constant and is denoted by kb as p1 v1 upon n1 t1 is equals to p2 v2 upon n2 t2 is equals to constant and that is equal to boltzmann constant kb if p v t are same then n is also same for all the gases this is avogadro's hypothesis that the number of molecules per unit volume is same for all the gases at a fixed temperature and pressure the number in 22.4 liters of any gas is 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 this is known as the avogadro's number and is denoted by na the mass of 22. 4 liters of any gas is equal to its molecular weight in grams at standard temperature 273 kelvins and pressure 1 atm this amount of a substance is called the mole see chapter 2 for a more precise definition of mole avogadro has guessed the equality of the numbers in equal volumes of the gases at a fixed temperature and pressure from the chemical reactions kinetic theory justifies this hypothesis the perfect gas equation can be written as pv is equals to mu rt where mu is the number of moles and r is equals to na kb is a universal constant the temperature t is the absolute temperature choosing the kelvin scale for the absolute temperature r is equals to 8.314 joules per mole per kelvin here m upon mo is equals to n upon na where m is the mass of the gas containing n molecules 
and MO is the molar mass and NA is the Avogadro's number. Using these two equations, this can also be written as PV is equals to KB and D or P is equals to KB small nt, where small n is the number density, that is the number of molecules per unit volume. KB is the Boltzmann constant introduced above. Its value in SI units is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. A gas that satisfies equation 13.3 exactly at all pressures and temperature is defined to be an ideal gas. An ideal gas is a simple theoretical model of a gas. No real gas is truly ideal. Figure 13.1 shows departures from ideal gas behavior for a real gas at three different temperatures. Notice that all curves approach the ideal gas behavior for low pressures and high temperature. At low pressure or high temperatures, the molecules are far apart and the molecular interactions are negligible. Without interactions, the gas behaves like an ideal one. If we fix mu and t, we get PV is equals to constant. Finally, consider a mixture of non-interacting ideal gas mu1 mole of the gas 1, mu2 mole of the gas 2, etc. in a vessel of volume V at temperature T and pressure P. It is then found that the equation of a state of the mixture is PV is equals to mu1 plus mu2 and so on into RT. Clearly, P1 is equals to mu1 RT by V is the pressure gas 1 would exert in the same conditions of volume and temperature if no other gas were present. This is called the partial pressure of the gas. Thus the total pressure of a mixture of ideal gas is the sum of partial pressures. This is Dalton's law of partial pressure. Kinetic theory of an ideal gas. Kinetic theory of an ideal gas is based on the molecular picture of matter. A given amount of a gas is a collection of a large number of molecules typically of the order of the Avogadro's number that are in incessant random motion. At ordinary temperatures and pressures, the average distance between the molecule is a factor of 10 or more than the typical size of the molecule that is 2 angstrom. Thus, the interaction between the molecules is negligible and we can assume that they move freely in the straight lines according to the Newton's first law. However, occasionally they come close to each other, experience intermolecular forces and their velocity changes. These interactions are called collisions. The molecules collide incessantly against each other or with the walls and change their velocities. The collision are considered to be elastic. We can drive an expression for the pressure of a gas based on kinetic theory. We begin with the idea that molecules of a gas are incessant random motion colliding against one another and with the walls of the container. All collisions between the molecules among themselves or between the molecules and walls are elastic. This implies the total kinetic energy is conserved. The total momentum is conserved as usual. Pressure of an ideal gas. Consider a gas enclosed in a cube of side 1. Take the axis to be parallel to the sides of the cube as shown in figure 13.4. A molecule with velocity vx, y and vz hits the planar wall parallel to yz plane of the area. Since the collision is elastic, the molecule rebounds with the same velocity. Its y and the z component of the velocity do not change in the collision, but the x component reverses the sign. That is, the velocity after collision is minus vx, vy and vz. The change in the momentum of the molecule is minus mvx minus mvx is equals to minus 2 mvx. By the principle of conservation of momentum, the momentum imparted to the wall in the collision is equals to 2 mvx. To calculate the force and pressure on the wall, we need to calculate momentum imparted to the wall per unit time. In a small time interval delta t, a molecule with x component of velocity vx will hit the wall if it is within the distance vx delta t from the wall. That is, 
all molecules within the volume AVX delta T only can hit the wall in time delta T, but on an average, half of these are moving towards the wall and the other half away from the wall. Thus, the number of molecules with velocity Vx, Vy and Vz hitting the wall in time delta T is half A Vx delta Tn, where n is the number of molecules per unit volume. The total momentum transferred to the wall by these molecules in time delta T is Q is equal to 2m Vx into half n A Vx delta T. The force on the wall is the rate of momentum transfer Q by delta T and pressure is the force per unit area. P is equals to Q by A delta T is equals to N M V X square. Actually, the molecule in a gas do not have the same velocity. There is a distribution in velocities. The above equation therefore stands for the pressure due to the group of molecules with speed Vx in the x direction and N stands for the number density of that group of molecules. The total pressure is obtained by summing over the contribution due to all groups. P is equals to Nm Vx square where Vx square bar is the average of Vx square. Now the gas is isotropic that is there is no preferred direction of the velocity of the molecules in the vessel. Therefore by symmetry average of Vx squared is equals to average of Vy squared is equals to average of Vz squared is equals to 1 by 3 into Vx squared plus Vy squared plus Vz squared is equals to 1 by 3 average of V squared. Thus, P is equals to 1 by 3 Nm V square. Some remarks on this derivation. First, though we choose the container to be a cube, of the shape of the vessel really is immaterial. For a vessel of arbitrary shape, we can always choose a small infinitesimal area and carry through the steps above. Notice that both A and delta T do not appear in the final results. By Pascal's law given in chapter 10, pressure is one portion of the gas in equilibrium is the same as anywhere else. Second, we have ignored any collision in the derivation. Though this assumption is difficult to justify rigorously, we can qualitatively see that it will not lead to the erroneous result. The numbers of molecules hitting the wall in the time delta t was found to be half n AVX delta t. Now the collisions are random and the gas is in a steady state. Thus, if a molecule with velocity Vx, Vy, Vz acquires a different velocity due to collision with some molecule, there will always be some other after a collision acquires a velocity. If this were not so, the distribution of velocities would not remain steady. In any case, we are finding Vx square. Thus, on the whole, molecular collisions, if they are not too frequent and the time spent in a collision is negligible compared to time between collisions, will not affect the calculation above. Kinetic Interpretations of Temperature Equation 13.4 can be written as PV is equals to 1 by 3 NVM V square. PV is equals to 2 by 3 n x half m v square where n is equals to small n v is the number of molecules in the sample. The quantity in the bracket is the average translational kinetic energy of the molecules in the gas. Since the internal energy E of an ideal gas is purely kinetic, E is equals to n into half m v square. Equation gives p v is equals to 2 by 3 E. We are now ready for a kinetic interpretation of temperature. Combining the two equations with the ideal gas equation, we get E is equals to 3 by 2 Kb and T or E by N is equals to half mv square is equals to 3 by 2 Kb T. That is the average kinetic energy of a molecule is proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. It is independent of pressure volume or the nature of the ideal gas. This is a fundamental result relating temperature, a macroscopic measurable parameter 
of a gas a thermodynamic variable as it is called to molecular quantity namely the average kinetic energy of a molecules the two domains are connected by a boltzmann constant we note in passing that equation 13.18 tells us that internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature not on pressure or volume with this interpretation of temperature kinetic theory of an ideal gas is completely consistent with the ideal gas equation and the various gas laws based on it for a mixture of non reactive ideal gas the total pressure gets contribution from each gas in the mixture this equation now becomes p is equals to 1 by 3 n1 m1 v1 square plus n2 m2 v2 square plus and so on in equilibrium the average kinetic energy of the molecules of different gases will be equal that is half m1 v1 square is equals to half m2 vt square is equals to 3 by 2 kbt so that p is equals to n1 plus n2 and so on into kbt which is the dalton's law of partial pressure from equation 13.19 we can get an idea of the typical spread of molecules in a gas at a temperature t is equals to 300 kelvin the mean square speed of molecule in nitrogen gas is v square average is equals to 3 kbt by m is equals to 516 whole square meter square per second square the square root of v square average is known as the root mean square rms speed and is denoted by vrms vrms is equals to 516 meters per second the speed is of the order of the speed of sound in the air it follows from equation 13.19 that at the same temperature light molecules have greater rms speed law of equipartition of energy the kinetic energy of a single molecule is half mvx square half mvy square half mvz square a molecule free to move in space needs three coordinates to specify its location if constrained to move along a line it needs just one coordinate and if it is constrained to move in a plane it needs two to locate it this can also be expressed in another way we can say it that it has one degree of freedom of motion in a line two degrees of motion in a plane and three for motion in space motion of a body as a whole from one point to another is called the translation thus a molecule free to move in space has three translational energies of freedom each translational energy of freedom contributes a term that contains a square of some variable of motion example half m v x square and similar terms in v y and v x in equation 13.24 we see that in thermal equilibrium the average of each such term is half k b t molecule of a monoatomic gas like argon have only translational energies of freedom but what about a diatomic gas such as oxygen or nitrogen a molecule of oxygen has three translational energies of freedom but in addition it can also rotate about its center of mass figure 13.6 shows the two independent axes of rotation 1 and 2 normal to the axes joining the two oxygen atoms about which the molecule can rotate the molecule thus has two rotational degrees of freedom each of which contributes a term of total energy consisting of translational energy and rotational energy note that each rotational degree of freedom contributes a term to the energy that contains a square of a rotational variable of motion we have assumed above that the o molecule is a rigid rotator that is the molecule does not vibrate this assumption though found to be true at moderate temperature for oxygen is not always valid molecule like carbon monoxide even at moderate temperature have a mode of vibration that is 
its atom oscillate along the interatomic axis like a one dimensional oscillator and contribute a vibrational energy term epsilon v to the total energy at this point notice an important feature while each translation and rotational degree of freedom has contributed only one squared term in equation 13.26 one vibrational mode contributes two squared terms kinetic and potential energies each quadratic term occurring in the expression for energy is a mode of absorption of energy by the molecule. We have seen that in thermal equilibrium at absolute temperature T, for each translational mode of motion the average energy is half KBT, a most elegant principle of classical statistical mechanics. First proved by Maxwell, it states that it is so far for each mode of energy translational, rotational and vibrational. That is in equilibrium, the total energy is equally distributed in all possible energy modes, with each energy mode having an average energy equal to half kBT. This is known as the law of equipartition of energy. Accordingly, each translational and rotational degree of freedom of a molecule contributes half kBT to the energy while each vibrational frequency contributes 2 into half kBT is equals to kBT since a vibrational mode has both kinetic and potential energy modes. The proof of the law of equipartition of energy is beyond the scope of this book. Here we shall apply the law to predict the specific heats of the gases theoretically. Later we shall also discuss briefly the application to specific heats of solid. Specific heat capacity Monoatomic gas The molecule of a monoatomic gas has only three translational degrees of freedom. Thus the average energy of a molecule at temperature T is 3 by 2 kBT. The total internal energy of a mole of such a gas is U is equals to 3 by 2 kBT into Na is equals to 3 by 2 Rt. The molar specific heat at constant volume Cv is Cv monoatomic gas is equals to du by dt is equals to 3 by 2 Rt. For an ideal gas, Cp minus Cv is equals to R, where Cp is the molar specific heat at constant pressure. Thus, Cp is equals to 5 by 2 R. The ratio of specific heat, gamma, is equals to Cp by Cv is equals to 5 by 3. Diatomic gas. As explained earlier, the diatomic molecule treated as a rigid, Rotator like a dumbbell has 5 degree of freedom, 3 translational and 2 rotational. Using the law of equipartition of energy, the total internal energy of a mole of such a gas is U is equals to 5 by 2 kBT into Na is equals to 5 by 2 Rt. The molar specific heats are then given by Cv is equals to 5 by 2 R. Cp is equals to 7 by 2 R. Gamma rigid diatomic is equals to 7 by 5. If the diatomic molecule is not rigid but has in addition a vibrational mode, Cv is equals to 7 by 2 R, Cp is equals to 9 by 2 R and gamma is equals to 9 by 7. Polyatomic gas. In general a polyatomic molecule has three translational and three rotational degrees of freedom and a certain number f of the vibrational modes according to the law of equipartition of energy it is easily seen that one mole of such a gas has u is equals to 3 by 2 kbt plus 3 by 2 kbt plus f kbt into na that is gamma is equals to 4 plus f divided by 3 plus F. Cv is equals to 3 plus Fr and Cp is equals to 4 plus Fr. Note that Cp minus Cv is equals to R is true for any ideal gas whether mono, di or polyatomic. Table 13.1 summarizes the theoretical predictions for specific heats of the gas ignoring any vibrational modes of motion. 
the value are in good agreement with experimental values of specific heat of several gases given in the table 13.2. Of course, there are discrepancies between the predicted and the actual values of the specific heats of the several other gases not shown in the table, such as chlorine, C2H6 and many other polyatomic gases. Usually, the experimental values for a specific heat of these gases are greater than the predicted values in the table, suggesting that the agreement can be improved by including vibrational modes of energies in the calculation. The law of equipartition of energies is thus well verified experimentally at ordinary temperature. A specific heat capacity of solid. We can use the law of equipartition of energy to determine the specific heat of solids. Consider a solid of n atoms, each vibrating about its mean position. An oscillation in one dimension has average energy of 2 into half kBT is equals to kBT. In three dimensions, the average energy is 3 kBT. For a mole of solid, N is equals to Na and the total energy is U is equals to 3 kBT into Na is equals to 3 RT. Now at constant pressure delta Q is equals to delta U plus P delta V is equals to delta U since for the solid delta V is negligible. Hence C is equals to delta Q by delta T is equals to delta U upon delta T is equals to 3R. Specific heat capacity of water. We treat water like a solid. For each atom, average kinetic energy is 3 kBT. Water molecules have 3 atoms, 2 of hydrogen and 1 oxygen. So it has U is equals to 3 into 3 kBT into Na is equals to NRT. This is the value observed and the agreement is very good. In the calorie gram and degree units, water is defined to have unit specific heat as 1 calorie is equals to 4.179 joules and 1 mole of water is 18 grams. The heat capacity per mole is approximately equal to 75 joule per mole per Kelvin that is approximately equal to 9 R. However, with more complex molecules like alcohol or acetone, the arguments based on degrees of freedom becomes more complicated. Lastly, we should note an important aspect of the predictions of specific heat based on the classical law of equipartition of energy. The predicted specific heats are independent of temperature. As we go to low temperatures, however, there is a marked departure from this prediction. Specific heats of all the substances approaches zero as T approaches zero. This is related to the fact that degree of freedom get frozen and ineffective at low temperatures. According to the classical physics, degrees of freedom must remain unchanged at all times. The behavior of specific heat at low temperature shows the inadequacy of the classical physics and can be explained only by invoking quantum considerations as was first shown by Einstein. Quantum mechanics requires a minimum non-zero amount of energy before a degree of freedom comes into play. This is also the reason why vibrational energy of freedom come into play only in some cases. Mean free path Molecule in a gas have rather large speed of the order of the speed of sound, yet a gas leaking from a cylinder in a kitchen takes considerable time to diffuse to other corners of the room. The top of a cloud of the smoke holds together for hours. This happens because of the molecules in a gas have a finite though small size, so they are bound to undergo collisions. As a result, they cannot move straight unhindered. Their path keep getting incessantly deflected. Suppose the molecule of gas or spheres of diameter d focus on a single molecule with the average speed average v. It will suffer collisions with any molecule that comes within a distance d between the centers. In time delta t, it sweeps the volume pi d square into average velocity into delta t. 
where in any other molecule will collide with it. If n is the number of molecules per unit volume, the molecule suffers n pi d square into average velocity into delta t collisions in time delta t. Thus, the rate of collision is n pi d square average velocity or the time between the two successive collisions is on the average tau is equals to 1 by n pi v into d square. The average distance between the two successive collisions called the mean free path L is L is equals to average velocity into tau is equals to 1 by n pi d square. In this derivation we imagine the other molecules to be at rest but actually all molecules are moving and the collision rate is determined by the average relative velocity of the molecules. Thus we need to replace average velocity by the average relative velocity in the equation. A more exact treatment gives L is equals to 1 by under root 2 n pi d square. Let us estimate L and tau for the air molecules with average speeds. After calculating, tau is equal to 6.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 seconds and L is equals to 1500 d. As expected, the mean free path given by this equation depends inversely on the number density and the size of the molecules. In a highly evacuated tube, n is rather small and mean free path can be as large as the length of the tube. Summary the ideal gas equation connecting pressure P, volume V and absolute temperature T is PV is equals to mu RT is equals to KBNT where mu is the number of moles and N is the number of molecules R and KB are the universal constants. Real gases satisfy the ideal gas situations only approximately, more so at low pressures and high temperatures. 2. Kinetic theory of an ideal gas gives the relation P is equals to 1 by 3 nmv average square, where n is the number density of molecules, m is the mass of the molecule and v square average is the mean of the squared speed. Combined with the ideal gas situation, it yields a kinetic interpretation of temperature. Half mv square is equals to 3 by 2 kbt. VRMS is equals to V square under root is equals to under root 3 kBT divided by M. This tells us that the temperature of a gas is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a molecule. Independent of the nature of gas or molecule, in a mixture of gases, at a fixed temperature the heavier molecule has the lower average speed. 3. The translational kinetic energy E is equals to 3 by 2 kBnT. This leads a relation PV is equals to 2 by 3E. 4. The law of equipartition of the energy states that if a system is in equilibrium at absolute temperature T, the total energy is distributed equally in the different energy modes of absorption, the energy in each mode being equal to half kBt. Each translational and the rotational degree of freedom corresponds to one energy mode of absorption and has energy half kBT. Each vibrational frequency has two modes of energy, kinetic and potential, with corresponding energy equal to 2 into half kBT is equals to kBT. 5. Using the law of equipartition of energy, the molar specific heats of the gases can be determined and the value are in agreement with the experimental values of the specific heats of several gases. The arrangements can be improved by including vibrational modes of motion. 6. The main free path L is the average distance covered by a molecule between two successive collisions. L is equals to 1 by under root 2 into n pi d square, where n is the number density and d is the diameter of the molecule. Points to ponder. 1. Pressure of a fluid is not exerted on the wall. Pressure exerted everywhere in the fluid. Any layer of the gas inside the volume of a container is in equilibrium because pressure is same on both the sides of the layer. 2. 
we should not have an exaggerated data of the intermolecular distances in a gas. At ordinary temperatures and pressure, this is only 10 times or so the interatomic distance in solids and liquids. What is different in the main free path, which in a gas is 100 times the interatomic distance and 1000 times the size of the molecule? 3. The law of equipartition of energy is stated thus, the energy of each degree of freedom in thermal equilibrium is half kBd. Each quadratic term in the total energy expression of a molecule is to be counted as a degree of freedom. Thus, each vibrational mode gives 2, not 1 degrees of freedom, corresponding to the energy 2 into half kBt is equals to kBt. 4. Molecules of air in a room do not all fall and settle on the ground due to gravity, because of their high speed and incessant collision. In equilibrium, there is a very slight increase in density at lower heights, like in atmosphere. The effect is small, since the potential energy mgh for ordinary height is much less than the average kinetic energy, half mv square of the molecules. 5. The average of a squared quantity is not necessarily the square of the average. Can you find example for this statement?